Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have, well, it's a show. That's what we have today. <laughs> and it's a show that has Brianna in it. Hello. Hello, Robbie. It's good to be here. Good to have you. What's going on? Well, later in the show, we'll be joined by Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis to discuss his latest uh, piece for 1945. Tesla and Figaro will join us as well for uh, a follow-up on Kanye West's newest controversy. But first, yesterday, Kiev was rocked as part of a multi-city bombing campaign that saw at least 14 people killed and over 100 civilians injured across Ukraine. Russia President Vladimir Putin claimed responsibility for the explosions, which he says were retaliation for last week's, quote, terrorist bombing of a bridge linking Crimea to Russia. President Zelensky says the attacks are further proof that Ukraine's Western allies need to invest in the country's air defense system. After speaking with Zelensky yesterday, President Biden condemned Russia's bombing as, quote, utter brutality and pledged continued economic, humanitarian and security assistance to Ukraine. Yeah, so this is still going on, obviously, um, you know, new developments in the war in Ukraine, um, developments that I, I think uh, of most interest to us in the U.S. is the very escalated concern about um, a, a nuclear crisis as Putin is increasingly, theoretically at least, increasingly cornered, finding no way out. Um, obviously, that's still a very slim chance, but it's more of a chance than any of us would want to contemplate. And, you know, we need to find Ukraine has performed very, from a military standpoint, very well, clearly, in this conflict, especially as of late, taken back a lot of territory. But we can't just, you know, continue in an unlimited fashion supporting this effort. Like, it, it is time for diplomacy. You know, I keep saying that. I mean, like, it, yeah. no matter what happens, that's what I say. Well, but that also, is just true. Take a, take a step back for a second. I mean, the developments over the last few days have been not just the escalation in terms of potential nuclear escalation that I think we were, have been very correct to talk about and keep front of mind for people. So, I mean, thank you for bringing that up again. But also, it's this escalation on the ground that I think is putting a finer point on what the stakes are here for the human lives at, at, at stake. The characterization, the, the, the bridge, the bridge bombing. First, talk, last week we talked about the sabotage of Nord, Nord Stream 2 and who was responsible right. for that, and still we have no takers on that. The bridge bombing is a very different situation, where it was a kind of a su suicide bomber style uh, event, where a truck driver drove the, the bomb on the bridge, three civilian deaths. It was really gruesome footage to watch. And it is not the kind of, it's, it's really regretfully the kind of event that we're very used to seeing in different kind of parts of the world, but I think had a, had a visceral effect on folks because, unfairly, I just want to emphasize, mm -hmm. uh, but because it is in Europe, perhaps, and in familiar settings, and it felt relatable and really proximate. What is so interesting to me Alexander is that Vidman said he'd been dreaming of this exactly, moment on Twitter. Exactly, exactly. This really odd, jingoistic, almost, dare I say, kind of a bloodthirsty approach to these, this kind of an escalation, which feels to me almost more dangerous. I won't, it's not obviously literally more dangerous than the loss of life itself, but that's, that's preceding something particularly insidious. And then that obviously triggered a wave of counterattacks from Russia, which are being characterized as disproportionate yeah. or somehow unfair. And obviously, I don't want anybody to be right. killing anybody, right. and that's why we should be talking about de-escalation. But it is, it is weird to be so openly embracing the idea of war and conflict and then being so kind of futzed about the idea of the re retaliation. Like, this is, this, this right. is what it means to be an open, armed conflict with another person. And yes, ultimately, if it continues to escalate, we all have to deal with the consequences of the potential nuclear fallout. And the, lo the longer it goes on, the right, the harder it becomes to disentangle, like who's in the right. Obviously, Ukraine is in the right. They were invaded by Russia. That's the proximate cause of this war. Now, of course, we can trace, you know, decisions that were made, including by the U.S. and et cetera, you know, that predate that, that might have yeah, that, that led to this situation arising. The more the more killing there is, the more destruction there is, the more the people who have suffered that destruction will say, well, you know, maybe the underlying policy was bad, or that, but now you destroyed my house, you destroyed my bridge, you killed people I know, so now I, I want to kill you for that reason. And like, the, so the, the longer it goes on, the more people, people have an a, a incentive to fight or a desire to fight um, having to do with how they've been harmed by the war itself, absolutely. and that, that's how few, that's how like blood feuds arrive be, be, his, historically between you know rival families and gangs and so you know like well they did it first, but before that they did, and before that they did it because there's enough they did it in wars over yeah. time. 
Are these actions leading us closer to a negotiated peace? Right. That's the that's question that everything, exactly. And I, I'm afraid that's not, not the discourse that's happening right now. Former President Donald Trump renewed calls for Ukraine-Russia peace talks, at least during a rally in Arizona yesterday. Let's watch. We must demand the immediate negotiation of a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine, or we will end up in World War III, and there will be nothing left of our planet, all because stupid people didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue. They don't understand. They really don't understand. I rebuilt our military. I rebuilt our nuclear power. They don't understand what they're dealing with, the power of nuclear. Thank goodness he didn't say anything about the election, or else maybe we wouldn't be able to even play that <laughs> speech. But look, really, Robbie, what is the topsy-turvy world we live in, where we have kind of Biden's response being about how this conflict is justifying more funds to Ukraine, more you know, new Russian attacks justify increased funding. That's the the linear trajectory of all of the discourse from the sitting administration. And for a conversation about peace settlements, we're turning to Donald, Donald Trump. Right. Someone who, recall all the mainstream media and progressive media writing about Donald Trump as he was becoming president, about how this had raised the threat of nuclear destruction. I think the assumption being because he's such a careless and yes. reckless individual, unlike any of the kind of normal people we've had in president, normal people who have, you know, droned yes, people and jo started tons of wars. John Mulaney has a bit about how Trump is like being a, a, a horse in a hospital. Yeah. yeah unpredictable. It's somewhere in the hospital. <laughs> and, and now look at the situation we're in. <laughs> a horse in a hospital. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good bit. It's a funny it's one. It's a good bit. Um, right. So that, that was what all, all that was said about Trump. Now, look, we are... We are in a scenario where we are, I, I think it's undeniable. I, I don't think we're like close to nuclear war. I'm not trying to like scare people. It's just, it is more elevated at this moment yeah. than it was for under the Trump presidency. And where is the, I'm not seeing a lot of mainstream uh, fear mongering about how Biden is bringing us to the brink of nuclear annihilation, the way they were saying that about Trump. Absolutely it, not. It's, that's Absolutely kind of unfair. And, and that's why there's this broader credibility crisis, I think, you know, in the media. It's, it's not obviously, it's just the world's smallest praise, right? Oh, Donald Trump isn't leading us into nuclear right. war. But it does, I think, laying it out this way does, I think, help people realize what is motivating voters to go in one direction or the other when there is the, the superseding narrative for so many liberals is that Trump is the one that was presenting the most danger to the United States because danger is so narratively defined. It's, it's not wrong, the criticisms that are obviously made, but we have to ha be more comprehensive, I think, in our critiques of, of pe members of both parties. Well, we're going to put our horse back in our hospital <laughs> and have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.